Hey guys, picking A levels is a really, really tricky thing for you to do. Um, I know at this time of year you're busy revising your exams, A level choices have to be in, um, and A level physics is a brilliant, brilliant choice. And I have got here with me an expert on A level physics. This is Lewis from A level physics online, and he's going to tell you why A level physics is a great option. Yeah. Now I must admit I am massively biased because I've been teaching physics for about ten years, and I've got this big A level channel and so on, and so on. Um, but I'm not saying you have to do it, but I'm saying you should consider it. Because, okay, to be honest, A-level physics is really hard. But A-level maths is hard, A-level biology is hard, A-level chemistry is hard, psychology is hard. A-levels are a lot harder than GCSEs. But that's fine because you've got two years to do it. And if you've been working well at GCSE, it's kind of nice and progressive. So if you can get a good mark at GCSE, then there's no reason why you can't progress onto A-level physics. So I might just talk a little bit about what the course involves and maybe why it's something that not only you're able to do, but actually why it might you know, be good for you in the future. Lots of you asked me about grades. So what grades do you think will be a good starting point for A-level physics? Okay, um, generally a grade seven or above is, is a real big advantage. You can do it with a grade six. I think it sometimes depends on the school that you're at and what the kind of requirements are. But generally if you're getting a grade seven and above, you'll be absolutely fine with A-level physics. And now here's the thing, a lot of people might get the same grades in maybe biology, physics and chemistry, and then they think, well, I can do A-level biology, but A-level physics is going to be too hard for me. That's not true. If you can get a grade seven in GCSE physics or even GCSE science, if you're doing a combined award, then you've got all the skills that you need to actually kind of allow you to access the A-level. If you do get a grade six, that's fine, because um, when I've taught people, Sometimes, actually, people who do really well at GCSE, they end up, you know, really diving at A-level because they think, oh, it's easy, I'll just revise a week before the exam, I'll just sit and learn some equations. And then there's often this bit of, um, like, complacency and people think, well, I did well at GCSE, I'll just work hard at the end of year 13. And then they kind of end up actually doing a lot worse than they expected. And I think the other thing that uh, people often find difficult is that when you're doing A-levels, um, you know, most people who are doing A-levels got grades 7, 8 or 9 at GCSE and then now they're coming out with D's and E's. And they think, you know, what's going on? I'm, I, I used to be at the top of the class and now I'm kind of in the middle. But that's because everybody doing A-level has done generally quite well at GCSE. So don't expect that just because you've got a grade eight or a grade nine, that you're going to suddenly get the kind of A's and A-stars at, at A-level. But I mean, that, that's going to be the same for all of your subjects, not just, not just A-level physics. The other thing is that there's actually quite a massive problem that people think, uh, well, boys do physics and boys do maths and girls do biology. And actually that is what happens. Um, I think probably in the UK for the last 20 or 30 years about 20% of people doing A-level physics have been girls compared to 80% of boys. And I think with biology it's a bit different, I think it's about 60 to 70% girls. Yeah, I think so. But here's the thing, at GCSE girls and boys do equally well and just as many girls do triple science as boys do triple science. So actually um, you know, most of the time, actually, girls do a bit better, I think, because boys are a bit more lazy, perhaps, or maybe that's just a stereotype. <laughs> but it tends to be that girls outperform boys at GCSE, even at GCSE physics, and they think, well, but maybe I'm not going to be good enough for A-level. And I think it's a bit of that confidence that maybe they think, maybe I can't do it. Uh, and the other problem is that, um, I suppose there's a thing that people, you know, especially girls, they think, well, engineering's not for them. It's very much a male-dominated career, and you have to be, you have to have, like, this kind of male brain to actually kind of do this problem-solving. But again, that's not true because there's so many thousands of girls do A-level maths each year and they do absolutely fine at it. And there's no difference between girls and boys' performance, even A-level physics, it's just there's less girls doing it. And I think that's something that, you know, if you're a girl watching this, there's no reason why you can't do A-level physics. I suppose the other thing is that um, just because you do A-level physics, you don't have to go and do physics at university and you don't have to be a physicist. I think probably about 0.5% of people who do A-level physics actually end up becoming you know, people who actually specialise in physics. And it's just, it's a really nice subject because it allows you loads and loads of opportunities later in life. If you've got A-level physics behind you, then that allows you to then, it, you know, so it's, a, it's like, I suppose, a proper A-level. Do you know I mean, it's, it's like rigorously, it's academically demanding. It's a facilitating it's subject. A facil yeah, and actually, it's... I think like 98% of people who do A-level physics go on to university. You know, so that, that shows that it's, it's, you know, it's seen by all the university um, admin admission tutors as like a useful thing because it shows that you're, you know, you know how to problem solve. And um, yeah, just because you're doing A-level physics, it doesn't mean you're going to be a physics professor in the future. 
but it allows you a lot more options in your own career after you know after you've left education. Now I know lots of think people think that physics is a bit boring. What is the coolest thing about A level physics? Okay, GCSE. Uh, there's all this opportunity to look at particle physics and look at space. So this is the stuff that people like Brian Cox makes TV shows about. I mean, he he's done some stuff at like Manchester Arena to like ten thousand people, and he's talking about the stuff that we teach in A level physics. And it's actually the stuff that we don't really do at GCSE. To us, GCSE physics is quite boring because it's like forces and Newton's laws and it's like energy stores and it's it's all right. But actually, all the good stuff you introduce, you get introduced to it at A level. So this is where we look at some of the kind of quantum way of things working, about how we actually lie to you at GCSE because light isn't a wave. Uh, it's kind of like a wave and a particle at the same time, but it's not either, which kind of doesn't make sense. And we look a bit more about things like redshift and the Big Bang and how time started and before time there wasn't anything and how there's not an edge to the universe, but it's a finite thing. And it's like, it messes with your mind, which is good. You know, it's like, and at GCSE we say, oh yeah, you know, there's this stuff called like dark energy and that's it. Um, and A level, it kind of allows you to explore that a bit more. And it, you know, it's, it's a difficult subject and you've got to get the basics right because you've got to know about forces and energy to explore the other topics. But actually after a while, it's just um, a really different way of looking at the world. And it's not just doing calculations. I mean, there is calculations involved, but actually the maths in A-level physics is easier than the maths in A-level maths. And people do that and they do further maths. And then compared to that, the A-level physics is pretty straightforward. I think the only thing we do differently from GCSE is a little bit of logarithms. And that's like a couple of lessons and then it's easy. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's just a real, I mean, I've, I've never got bored of teaching it. I know I've not got bored making videos and I know that if you do it, it might be something that you enjoy. However, you don't have to do it. I'm not saying that you have to do a lot of physics. Um, I think if you have any background in science, that's really important because, you know, the way that uh, things are going, you know, your future career, it's not going to be a traditional career like maybe your parents had. I mean, five years ago, what were you doing? teaching and before that there wasn't even YouTube <laughs> I mean when I was at school you what we're doing now this is our jobs YouTube didn't exist people didn't make videos like this and I've had a couple of different careers but what's really allowed me to be adaptable about thinking of new ways for you know for my own career to go is because I've got these kind of this kind of skill set that allows me to look at problems to solve it and actually think creatively about things and that's what I guess some of my physics and maths and chemistry at A level this allowed me to kind of, kind of sort of follow this career path and you need to have that because it's not going to be that you get the same job for life you might change careers you might be looking at future technology and also you've got to solve climate change because we've made it our generation or our parents really they've just been burning stuff and it's down to people like you to actually think about how we can you know capture this carbon dioxide because we technically can do it but it needs people like you to be scientifically literate to actually you know change policy or government and that's i think quite a big important thing so yeah if you want to find out a little bit more about physics have a look at my website a level physics online or have a look at my youtube channel for a few a few hundred more videos about this so there we go thank you thanks Bye guys.